The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 81, Nasdaq's off 44, S&P's off 12 and a half. Gold, gold up $7, trading at $14.90 an ounce. You get silver down two cents, seventeen dollars thirty-five cents an ounce. Light sweet crude flat, fifty-two dollars fifty-two dollars ninety-nine cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year up six ticks, one twenty-nine thirty. The thirty-year up eight at one sixty oh six. And king dollar, king dollar down one hundred and sixty ticks, trading ninety-eight one twenty-seven. The euro is at one ten. The yen is at one oh eight point six six, and the pounds at one twenty eight. The pounds getting some real juice uh, underneath it, no doubt. It sure is, especially when some of the headlines have been negative for the pound, right? Yeah, they talking have. about uh, right. the big um, sit down or whatever they're calling it tomorrow, right? But the the headline ahead of that's that they worry that they can get a deal ahead of that. Versus yesterday, the headline was they, they think they, they can get exactly, a deal. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you can see that pound. I mean, that that yeah. thing's moving, man. I Pretty mean, remarkable. The low, right, is almost a two. Full points, ticks, whatever you call it, from 128.36 right now. We're at 126.58 just on the bar of today. Right. As in, and maybe that's where you did get a, a pullback on the negative news, and maybe there's been an update to a resurgence of optimism. Go over to the euro. The euro is getting a you know, lift, too. I mean, so it's going to get interesting here watching this whole thing shake out. Yeah. Because they've both been uh, down and down pretty bad for a long period of time. Yep. Uh, the opposite, of course, we go over to the dollar. The dollar got back inside its lower range uh, yesterday, and uh, it's digging into it now. You know, so the, the number that we're talking about here is 98,371. Well, you're only a couple hundred, a couple hundred point ticks into it. Yeah, uh, but, but nonetheless, right? Yeah. And the, well, here, let's go uh, Workday. Workday is getting smoked out here. Okay, uh, what do we got happening there? I'm not sure. Yeah, it, W-Day, it, they, it's going to be. They, they come out with yeah numbers but it's like this oh, okay thing's really getting smoked man yeah more down more than 10 percent yeah so let's see enterprise cloud-based applications okay 38 billion dollar company Ooh. not bad look at this is an abc down too oh baby that's trouble in paradise so you're broken you're broken a swing point 163 <laughs> look at this you needed two million shares 2.4 million and you got three million already let me put this on a weekly this could be like a, a much larger ABC down. And, you know, this is, look at this. This is trouble. Oh, look at this. This actually, this broke a B point. That's in August. So that would have been 226 on a weekly to 183. So you got, what, 26, 36, 43. Yes. Which would get you into the 150s. Oh, look at that. That's, that's the larger ABC. Yeah, 43, uh, that's 156 or something, right? Can I, um, can we see how far that pullback, can we pull up a Fibonacci? I just want to see from that recent run, maybe in last November. Right here? This no, one? can I just, right uh, yeah. yeah, like, you know, what the pullback's been. Yeah, as, right. Um, we'll pull up our annotation, we'll pull up a little retracement action, just kind of going off this area, which is a pretty solid area. Yeah, You're going from, it whether it's March of 18, all the way it's through November. You trade up pretty dramatically, and you're looking at exactly a 61% retracement yep. on the dot. Um, so we'll see. Let's see what they have to say. Quite that's... a pullback today, more than 10%. You know, if you're in that stock on margin, man, that's quite a hit. Slowing growth. Well, let's see. How do they want them to grow? Let's see. They, these, these high flowers. <laughs> there you go, PE of 94. <laughs> yeah, if you're in cloud software, right, you better be growing, man. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Can we pull up the maybe just the top one? Yeah. Because you get some analyst cuts probably coming out on the heels of that as well. So analysts uninspired by the company's recent Workday Rising event, with many brokerages noting slowing growth in the company's human capital management, HCM business, and most seeing few opportunities to offset that trend. Yeah. Yeah. Big number, man. Yeah. That is a big number. The... Uh 
How about gold, man? Why not? Because quite a pop on that retail that, sales, that, right? That retail number, yeah. So uh, you got a decline in retail sales of 03 percent. The core number uh, getting hit as well. And man, I you know gold pop from about 1480 to 1495. And usually that's been correlated to a market reaction as well, and no real market reaction on that news, right? Which is interesting. Yeah. So it, it was definitely a good pop. Oh yeah. And I, you know, that you can't see it on that chart when you put it in the right. And that it, 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 that comes back to that. One the, more time. If the consumer, <laughs> if the consumer basically stops spending money, uh, these rates are going to go to zero a lot faster than we yeah. think they might. Yeah. Um, because you know. I, I jump around on CNBC, not really a fan of CNBC in general, especially their television coverage, but they had some good quotes down here in terms of what we were working with. So um, you had data for August revised up to show retail sales getting 0.6 versus 0.4. All right. Economists pulled by Reuters, though, were looking for that 0.3% climb uh, compared to September last year. Retail sales increased 4.1%. Well, look at that. So we only got a 0.3%. No, we got a negative, right? We got a negative. They were looking for and an increase. Last September was a increase by 4.1? I was trying to go through this one as well in my head, and I think that's saying compared to last September, they were up 4.1%. Okay. But they climbed 0.3% for the month in September. That's still pretty good. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, but guess what, man? If the market's priced in for much bigger things, you know, that's where expectations everything. We're we're basically almost at high. So this is where excluding automobiles, gasoline, building materials, and food services, retail sales were unchanged last month after advancing by an undervised 0.3%. The so-called core retail sales correspond most closely with consumer spending. Um, with the consumer spending component of GDP. GDP, huge number, right? So last month's drop. And August unrevised gain in core retail sales likely suggest a much more significant slowdown in consumer spending in the third quarter than economists had been anticipating after a surge in the prior quarter. So that number, I think, is is already in the market. We had huge growth yeah. previous quarters, previous quarters. That's probably why that 4% number against a year. Consumer spending, which accounts for more than two-thirds of the economy, increased at a 4.6% annualized rate in the second quarter, the most in one and a half years. It's been the economy's pillar of support as the 15-month trade war with China has soured business sentiment, leading to a decline in capital and recession. So, you know, consumer spending has been the big one here because you had capital pullback capital for businesses, right? Yeah, right? Signs of a rapid deceleration in consumer spending coming on the heels of data showing moderation in hiring and service sector industry activity in September could further stoke financial market um, fears of a sharper slowdown in economic growth. So I thought that was interesting reading through that, you know, oh, because yeah. it really does break down how important that consumer is and how this core oh. number might really be pointing to that type of a slowdown. Yeah, the trend. Oof. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I don't think we're going to see year on year four point something percent next September, right? I mean, no. that's, that would be, we would have to have quite a, a 12 months right now when you're looking at a decline. It'd on be, the month. It'd be phenomenal. Exactly. <laughs> so let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities. We'll see whether we get any volume out here uh, today in this marketplace. You get Bank of America. They come out with numbers. That's up 61 cents. Chesapeake is flat. You got uh, Roku down three bucks. Microsoft's off a buck and a half. How about that pharma company, man? They must be getting taken out. Yeah, up, they are. Up 270, trading at 635. Alexion, Alexion yeah. buying that company. Good for Not those bad. shareholders. Stay yeah. right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Oil. No oil numbers today. Federal holiday on Monday. Yeah. So uh, we get oil numbers tomorrow, Thursday at 11 a.m., as opposed to Wednesdays at 1030 usually. And it's always kind of cool when you get that because for some reason, maybe maybe the government with their data, they just need two or three days no matter what. So Wednesday's a little bit too tight. They come back to work Tuesday, but they can still get the natural gas out Thursday as they always do. So you get natural gas as usual, 1030 on Thursday, and we get the crude right after that at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So that'll be right. interesting. Now, what, can you just hit that again? Sure. Uh, what are we looking for? The oil first. Well, right here is the oil. The number, so, so we're looking for the crude. That's coming out tomorrow, 11 a.m. They're look, looking for a build. Okay. A build survey number. That's usually the analyst number. Yeah. Looking at about 3 million barrels. The whisper number is just on Bloomberg, I believe. That's like URI. We can put it in yeah. here. So sometimes I give more credence to the analyst number because they're yeah. basing their whole job off that, whereas anybody right. on the terminal can shoot for the moon if they want to and right. tweak that whisper number. But nonetheless, they're usually pretty closely aligned, and they're looking for a build of between 2.3 and 3 million barrels yeah and yeah. let's see where natural gas is lining up out of curiosity well not surprising there more natural gas in the market right plenty of natural gas they're looking for 108 or 106 billion cubic feet um and it's pretty cool so that's the whisper number that you can see it move as people are guessing and that's going to move a lot as in i think a lot oh, of yeah. i think a lot of people really are pushing this um the morning of approaching as we sure. as we do, you know, yeah. 15 minutes ahead of time or whatever it is. Yeah. And how about gas? We'll finish it up before we jump. Gas. We're using up that down. gas, I guess. Yeah. They're looking for a drawdown of 1.5 to 1.75. So what else we got going on? Oh, Netflix. Netflix. NFLX. Now, this is going to be a monster, folks. I love so, just thinking about this story, you know, I because know. there's so many dynamics fundamentally. If you can, I was just telling you, I'm pretty sure I'm about to cut that cord right. like today, if not tomorrow. Uh, they're jacking up my cable bill again. Really don't watch too much TV. Uh, and I'm a Netflix fan. I'm an Amazon Prime fan. I'm an HBO Go fan. Uh, but guess what, man? I got I got some reservations about the the price levels that Netflix is at, as the market has from that pullback. But man, look at that revenue, right? You know, it's so funny is that you said you don't watch too much TV. And then I, I suspect, like, 
four or five years from now, we won't even use that word. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you no, know what I'm saying? Right. Because you, you, you're, it's come to represent a different thing. It is. It is. It yeah. is. I it say is. I don't watch too much no, TV. No, I did the same thing right. when I cut mine. It yeah. was like, you know, it, it's cutting the cable. Is Because you still, yeah. you know, I, I, I hit, if I want to watch a hockey game, I hit my little computer and my sure. phone. Do sure. You, know what I mean? you got your you phones, know? you got your tablets, right. you got right. your streaming right. devices. Right. You know, right. my laptop right now, I think it has a 4K screen. Those right. have come in pretty common place. Right. And the, right. you know, soon enough, the television, quote unquote, is just yes. going to become another tablet right. on your wall. So it lasted, uh, let's see, 1950, uh, 76 years. Yeah, it had a good... No, that's, no, that's no, yeah, I was like, it's not quite there. A nice 70-year yeah. run. Yeah. Why not? Um, but, man, so they're looking for, this quarter, $5.2 in revenue, and they're looking... Um, <laughs> looking for a big number to the bottom line. I was going to say, that'd be the first time they make a buck a share if they deliver, and uh, we'll see what happens. A lot of that, of course, in terms of their... Earnings is going to have to do with subscriber growth, as usual. Yeah. I think I had heard, I was saying to you before the program, that they're looking for somewhere around 800,000 subscriber growth within the U.S., and I believe something like 6 million abroad. Wow. Big numbers still to be growing. Yeah. When my contentious point with Netflix is that they might have reached peak saturation for themselves. They used to be the only player in the market. And guess what? It's right about when you're pointing on that chart. You backed things up 15 months ago. They were the right. only player. Now, Amazon's always been out there, okay? Yeah. But now you got Disney is the big one that I keep saying because, man, yes. oh, man, what's it going to be? $4.99? You're going to have Disney. You're going to have anybody with a child. It's almost like a 24-7 operation. You keep that as in there's no reason to cancel ever. Whereas Netflix, and I love Netflix. I'm a fan of their programs. But I don't see the need to have a Netflix subscription 12 months a year. Right. Maybe it's six months a year. You can go on and off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's why I think they've been trying uh, the idea of rolling out episodes for seasons at a time, which would be a bummer because I and, love and that binge that theory. look at number, man. They're still running. You know, they, they, they better come up with a big number, man. Yeah. They're running at 111 PE. Yeah. And, you know, if they're still growing in terms of adding 6 million subscribers over 90 days... They're going to have some growth in there for sure. You know, $124 billion company. And uh, they really have grown exponentially. Look at this. Yeah. In 2015, folks, they took in $6.8 yeah. billion. This year, 20.2. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. And look at the three-year international streaming, right. now, let you know, alone domestic. There's still three years. They're growing at 18% in the domestic big number yeah you back it up to 2016 i thought everybody already had netflix in 2016 let alone I, right i remember people saying 2015 2016 that exactly that yeah. yeah everyone did have it but guess what i wanted to see if we can get in here the exact let's maybe, see maybe so the they cut one. back on stand-up shows retooling of comedy budget that's interesting let's see competition looms uh let's see if we got any action here in terms of what they're actually looking for so Stock swings of 10% or more are not uncommon, but with the shares down more than a fifth, that's 20%, since they disappointed investors in July, the risk of another plunge may be lower this time. Kinda... Oh, we'll have to pull up the Think or Swim platform. Yeah, see the one-day expected yeah. move. We'll pull it right. up right now after this. So here we go. They're looking for an increase of about 800,000 U.S. subscribers and 6 million internationally. So that'll be the big one that they always look for. And, of course, they'll look for forward guidance as yeah. well. Um, yeah. So let's see. Uh, <coughs> Stranger Things is a hit for them. I guess. Yeah, and I watched Stranger Things. I'm a fan of it. Same deal, but you know what? It's it's. I watched it. I binged it in like a weekend. Yeah. But, you know, and then I, what do you do? For, yeah, on Netflix. And then what do you do for the other 50 weeks out of the year, right? right. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Let's jump over to the Thinkorswim platform. Netflix. And I believe we go into the Analyze. Is that where yep, we're at? Analyze tab, yep. NFLX. One day market maker expected move $27. So almost 10%. Almost 10%. Yep. And one way or the other, that's what the market makers are pricing in for premium if you want to kind of buy both sides of the market, right? right. Um, with an expiration of like the current date, this week's expiration, you're looking at the market maker one day expected move, $27.67. That is a giant man for sure. And to put that on a little bit of a longer time frame because it's always cool when you can see, we'll put it on a daily. Um, I mean, look at the earnings. And that is the one that they're talking about in July that they referenced, man, where right. they really talked about some slowdown. 
you were right up there near highs before their last earnings, and you would have thought that was a big drop on the number, but guess what? You would have gotten out of Dodge at 320 if you sold it the, day, the next day, and that stock still went to 254. Wow. So you're talking about $70 that it continued down after that drop, let alone, you know, we've gotten a little yep. pop, but man, oh man, there's, there's, there's no, um, you know, you could call it from September 24th, we're up about 30 bucks, not bad, but guess what? We're up 30 bucks, and you just saw that the market makers are saying it can drop 27 today or go up 27 today. Right. So that whole pop could be gone if they disappoint. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild, man. It is. That, that is a monster number. Let me go. It's, monster number. It really is. Oh, man. And I think, so what are they, a $125 billion company. I just saw, so they're going to take a, a buck to the bottom line. I think I saw in there 400-something million shares, so maybe they're making about four, $400 million. That's not that much when your company's valued at $125 billion right. and you got competitors coming down the line at you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow right now up 20, down 27. NASDAQ off 20. S&P's up 5.5. We'll come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 
We have the uh, Dow Industrials uh, down 19, Nasdaq off 20, S&Ps uh, off 5, and uh, you got a little pop out here. Yeah. So I just want to finish that one. I was going through with you the break. I love doing the comparisons, and I love this Netflix to Disney comparison, man, because I really see Disney coming to eat some Netflix lunch in, in, the, in the near future. So Disney... You're looking at a market cap of $235 billion. Okay, I think Netflix is about $125. So for easy math, call yeah. it almost double the size of the company, right? And you, you almost have 2 billion shares outstanding, okay? Right. So you get into the revenue, and you're looking at $571 for profit. Well, 5 bucks a share at 2 billion shares. They're going to make more than $10 billion in profits, okay? And they're pulling in $69.7 billion in revenue. Now you pull over Netflix's, we already ran the numbers, 324, okay, and they're, they have about 435 million shares outstanding, so that's looking at 1.4 billion, something like that. Well, we just compared it, Disney's taking in 10 billion in profit, Netflix yeah. only 1.4. Netflix revenue, about 20 billion. Again, Disney revenue, almost 70 billion, so three and a half times. And where it ties back to is that Netflix is pulling, and this is all about PE, right? So right. it's got to factor in growth. Netflix pulling a PE based off their 2019 expected, about 87, and Disney, I believe it was about 23. I know. Um, and we'll jump back to the profile. 23. So Netflix has a lot to prove. That's it. If you're going to be a buyer right. in Netflix, right, you better believe in their growth story. Right. Because you're not buying what they have already because it's priced in some dramatic growth. And guess what? You know, if they deliver 6 million international subscriber growth, if they deliver 800,000, but I would just keep your ears up if you're a buyer in Netflix, man, because I see, I don't, you can't, not that you can't, we'll see because people are saying it. I don't see how they can continue to grow at least domestically in the face of so much competition when they've so saturated that market for so long. Right. So we'll see. Yeah. And but, you're not going to be the only one watching that. <laughs> yeah, that's it's gonna, just that, it keeps... The, the market in general, that's going to be a big one in general. I agree. You know? I agree. Because uh, it's not just them, too. It's Time Warner, like we said, yeah. right? They got Hulu. They got ESPN. Um, Hulu, ESPN Plus. Um, there's going to be a lot of competition there is. coming for them. Let's go over to that oil market and see what we have here inside the oil and gas uh, equity. So the XLE right now, that's trading 58.03. I see this having a hard time getting any type of traction, man. Uh, it's, it's so intriguing that these oil companies, even at these prices, just have a tough time. I mean, $79 in May of last year, and you're just laying at these lows. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The... Uh, how about the fees on that Aramco deal? You see that yesterday? Banks. I mean, oh, what, what do you think the banks are going to pull in from the from the Aramco deal? I don't know. Four hundred fifty million dollars potentially. Okay. And it's just on one deal. Yeah. Now there's going to be twenty banks in there. I think J.P. Morgan and I forget the other bank are going to be the the lead. The yeah, the biggest hefty pack of the bunch, but. Uh, just a staggering amount of money when you think that it's going to cost almost half a billion dollars just to. Public. go public and they're only pushing out like two percent of the company right something like that i mean in theory it's really something that they're only really pushing it out to get a price get so a that currency. they can they can loan right. against that exactly. or you know a, a mark to market right um so if you want to be a two percent shareholder of the saudi oil company yeah more power to Good you luck. but yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so bitcoin this, uh, you're down at buck 85. The last lows out here, we're getting close to them. Seven, seven, three, six. Yeah. A couple hundred bucks down. Just been inching down, man. Inching yeah. down. And you can see, I mean, that's so. It's a pretty critical level, right? Going back to that May area where it kind of hung out for a while as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, it yep. almost looks like it can go fill this whole gap. At, oh, sure. 6,400. The high. And what is the low of that gap, if you can, that next bar, just to see where it opened? Uh, the next bar, the high, the low of that one, yeah. 68, 66, yeah. okay. Yeah. Big number. Oh, yeah. Big numbers, no no doubt about that. The um, that old crypto deal, it'll be interesting to, just to see where this whole thing does shake out in the end. Yeah, you had Libra, of course, yesterday, right, oh, with yeah. their losing basically every important partner they had. But then I heard an interview on Bloomberg early, early this morning about one of the founders of Libra saying they were in, like, Geneva or somewhere in Switzerland yesterday about a big convention to and it was all positive praise and i was like what a spin job when you basically have the whole idea fall apart yesterday and you're talking about how promising everything is in the future yeah Big so, time. yeah
Let's go over to the note and bond market. So the note and bond market, you know, this this little baby, tang and tough, but it, it's kind of intriguing because you know it rejected lower price yesterday. You did have lighter volume, but it's not like you're getting any strength in this. You know, you have five ticks. You can see you did volume of 285,000 contracts yesterday. You were going into 487, but you know you didn't hold price. So that swing point going all the way back to uh, the. 13th is going to be important. Yeah. And yeah. 160 is the high, 157 is the low. Because, like, these 10 year rates, these aren't, they're, they're so high now, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It's 1.75. Look out at that of, thing. It's out of the stratosphere, man. Right. right? You compare it to three months. I mean, that, I think that's probably within the last month, right? Can this go down in a month? Yeah. Yeah. 1.457. No, we weren't quite there. So 1.52, though, within the last month. Alone, and we're right. sitting at 1.75. Uh, the volatility in in the bonds, man. Whew. Watch right. out. That's a fact. Not not no such thing as uh, stability in that bond market no. right now. Now let's go over to Apple. You know, the, I don't know if they, if they get the, the propaganda going good, or get the PR going good, or good. Every day I turn on the radio, they keep talking about the 11, how it's selling more than they ever thought it was going to be okay. selling. Okay. You know. Yeah. The, show, the chart seems to agree. Yeah, there's, there's no yeah. doubt, man. There's no doubt. Now, look at that. We were just talking we about were. PEs. 20. 20. Yep. 20 PE. Not bad. Especially when they're a $1.05 trillion company. Now, they got, let's let's see the math. They got 4.5 billion shares outstanding. Not bad when your, your, your stock is priced at $235, and you have 4.5 billion pieces of that paper, each right. one being priced at $235. And let's see what they're going to take to the bottom line. So when, uh, actually, when, when do they come out with their October earnings? 30th. October 30th, yeah. okay. And they're looking, I mean, just staggering, man. So they're going to take more than 10 bucks to the bottom line, 1168 and that is more than $45 billion in straight profit over the year, man. And even for the quarter, you're looking at 284 and again, almost 5 billion shares. So you're looking at, what's that, $11 billion in profit in 90 days. I mean, it, it becomes, there's a lot of zeros going through my head trying to crunch that math, <laughs> man. <there> <laughs> yeah, seriously, right? Because what do you got? You got 11 billion over 90 days. That means every nine days, you're processing more than a billion in straight profit. Yeah, That's so you're it. approaching almost a billion dollars in profit a week because they're taking in, like I said, 40, 50 billion dollars, so almost a billion dollars in profit every seven days to the bottom line. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it is, especially That's when they still got a PE of 20. That's still some growth, man. You know, oh, it's not yeah. like an 11, it's not a 12, it's not a 14, it's a 20 when, Ooh, when you're processing yeah, a billion when, profit. Yeah, and, and we don't even, I guess we could find out how much cash they have in the bank. But Lots. You know, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You know, you, you look at that, it's like, yeah. okay. So Amazon, you know, uh, we're at 1780. You know, we haven't, you know, been hearing a lot about Amazon, but guess what? It's the holidays. I man. was waiting for you to say it. It's it sure the is. They usually have some pretty staggering headlines themselves during right. the holidays in terms of what they put out. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We're going to come back with our man, Mr. Teddy Cakes. That we are going to be talking currencies, and those currencies over in Europe are moving, folks. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, off 33, Nasdaq off 18, S&P's off 5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakes, that as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can check out Teddy every trading day, folks, at his website, which is forex-trading-unlocked.com. That's forex-trading-unlocked.com. Teddy Cakes, that, what's happening, brother? Good morning, guys. How are you today? Good morning, Teddy. Well, we got some movement out here, man. That that uh, pound has picked its head up. The euro looks like it's picking its head up. Yeah, we got some bulls going on over in Europe in front of the uh, the meetings that are going on tomorrow and Friday. So and for your viewers, I don't know if they're aware of the, obviously everyone's aware of the Brexit situation that's going on, but the uh, European Council on Brexit is meeting tomorrow and Friday. So we're probably not going to see very much action for the rest of today's session going into Friday in the euro and the pound right now, I would think. Okay. So this was the lead up to all the fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, the euro and the pound have both been rallying very nicely. Uh, if you look at the daily chart, we had that buy signal a couple of weeks ago. And right where the market is right now, it's pretty much into our target area from that initial buy signal from that low. Oh. So right now, I think we're in a really good situation where regardless of how the meeting comes out, we'll probably see just a slight pullback in the euro US dollar, a little consolidation, because you have almost an upside down head and shoulders forming. If you look at that current big low on the euro US dollar chart, it's like the head for a head and shoulders forming up right now. And then we have the pound US dollar, which obviously has been very strong, especially over the past couple of weeks. Uh, the weekly chart, actually, it's, it's strong today. It's hovering below its highs and stuff. Um, but the uh, last week, it was an explosive week. So we know that the, the, the range in the pound, when it starts to move, can get very extreme. And it looks like it definitely, uh, they, a lot of bulls are heading into this meeting. So we'll see what happens. But I think you're going to see digestion for the next couple of days. I don't think there's going to be much more of a swing trade left in it. Well, you know what's interesting is that they, they seem to both be moving up. I mean, you know, it's together, which is kind of cool, actually. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's the first I guess, time since the, in a while this year, right, Tom? Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, because it almost looked like the pound could go to a dollar. and Not the pound, the euro. It almost looked like the euro mm -hmm. could go to a dollar at a certain point. But Hey, it almost looked like the pound, too, on that yeah, trend, man. That, that, Seriously, there was no end in sight. Um, you know, so we'll see. We that. have a little bit 
another dollar weakness creeping in. If you, on today, on, uh, as far as the currencies are going, you have the pound U.S. dollar, the euro U.S. dollar that are strong. You have the uh, U.S. dollar yen right now that's fledgling. It was lower earlier today. Now it's kind of flat underneath hot new move highs that it set yesterday. Um, you have the U.S. dollar Swiss also that has fallen short of parity the last few sessions and is a little bit when right before we got on the air was lower. So I'm not sure where it's at right now. So I think that the dollar index right now obviously is on a little bit of a pause, uh, but we might be starting to see a little bit of a turn where we might start to see the dollar index pull back and start to see a little bit more strength in these other currencies. Yes. Hey, what do you think about the yen? It looks like the yen, I mean, you know, it's coming into that downdraft from what August first, but if it right. if it gets by that downdraft, man, that could basically get some juice, right? Right. Well, what's interesting is the the recent highs that it set over the past few sessions. Remember uh, last week when we were talking, we were talking about how those highs had gotten rejected and the market was actually a little sluggish. Yes. Now all of a sudden, it made this lower move low and it took out the highs for the past uh, few weeks. Right. It's that's a, that's a very positive signal. Um, but then also, if you look at the trend, the, the, the U.S. dollar yen has been rallying basically for a couple months now. I think we might be seeing, you know, if the dollar index starts to weaken, we may see now this is a little bit of a toppy area for the U.S. dollar yen and start to see a little bit of a retracement back to lower levels. I think today's close is big. Um, if you look at how we haven't made a higher move high yet, if the market settles a little bit lower, like if it starts to look like where it was a few hours ago, that's a short-term sell signal. And especially if we get a, a close that's lower today and another lower close tomorrow, that would be that would set off a nice uh, sell pattern for that we probably would see the market trend lower for the next week or so. Good, because right now that thing, uh, you know, looks to me it doesn't look to me but I, I, we know where it is I mean, if that bust this top side man the, the, the gold market will get smoked you know what i mean so right. it's like yeah interesting absolutely absolutely so i think that the bulls is as aggressive as they've been for the u.s dollar yen over the past week especially i think this is an exhaustion gap i think you're yeah. going to start to see it fall apart right is that why so what we're talking about folks the, the wide buy was an extraordinary move on on the first of august yeah. we went from 109 to 107, you know, which... Right. <laughs> yeah, there's huge action everywhere in there, right? That's yeah. when bonds took off, right. everything, but that's right. quite a bar on that yen. Yeah. Right. Right. And remember, we're done with the interest rate stuff right now for a little bit. Yeah. No one's really concerned about central banks right now. Right. Yeah. Pretty wild. So the, we're going to be back to the European Union, the Brexit, the pound. I guess I, the, the pound and the... Uh, Euro are going to be basically the movers out here, right? Absolutely. Though well, I think they're going to be movers come Friday, unless there's or probably next week, because I don't think we're going to get a lot of noise out of this council meeting unless they start to really spark headlines, you know. Um, but I think the Swiss, you could see a little swell off. The yen, if, especially, like I said, if we get a negative close today. Now, for your U.S. dollar Canada traders, that market has been wedging. It's kind of stuck in the mid, like the lower part of a dollar and a half range. Um, I wouldn't have very many, much expectations for that market either. I think it's going to probably be a little bit positive to neutral over the next week or so, but not much of a swing trade going there. But uh, yes, after the next couple of days, I think we'll start to see some action. But I think range traders are going to be the ones that are going to be making the money over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, and you know, we haven't had, like, I mean, last week there, there was some really fast movement there, but we haven't had, like, really fast movement in the currency markets for a while, right? No, we haven't. We yeah. haven't. We've had some nice trends. Individual markets on a daily basis, some have had some moves, like the pound. The pound has had aggressive rallies over the past couple of weeks when the other currencies were really quiet. If you look at the rally from the euro US dollar versus the pound, there's not much of a movement on the euro. It's gone up, but it's still basically really, it's it's right now yes. around that 110 area, but 10880 is, is just, you know, it's a buck and a half away, you right. know? But yeah. with the pound, look at how it's moved in the past two weeks. It's taken out like five handles. That's a big, yeah. aggressive move in, a, in basically a week, actually, of trading. Right. Yeah. And, you know, what, what does happen with the pound, folks, okay, I mean, this thing has got killed in the last two and a half years. It, it, it's very unusual that the pound is this low. I mean, in the context of 20 or 30 years. It's very unusual the country exits the European Union. Yeah. So. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah.
Too yeah. funny, right? Interesting times we live in I, right now. I'll tell you, man. <laughs> the, 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 well, no. you know what I think is going to get interesting is after this meeting, guys, because we're, we're right now we're 16 days or, or 15 days away from the actual Brexit date. Um, and it, with the way it's looking right now, the, the, there's some pretty big issues that they're talking about as far as traveling. You know, like you're going to be able to travel between the UK and the EU, but you're not going to be able to move to the UK after January 1 very easily at all. Yeah, it's going to change a lot, man. That's, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. So we'll see. It's going to get interesting, right, guys? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Teddy, you have a great week, safe week, and of course, we look forward to speaking to next Wednesday. Sounds great, guys. Take Thank care. you. So Thanks much. for the update, Teddy. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Tom and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfna.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down nine. Nasdaq's up 11. SP's up two and a half. And the market just shakes it off. You better talk quick. We're going to be green territory by the time we're it, off the air in it, three minutes. It shakes it off. My goodness. There's, there's no two ways about it. Yeah. Um, you know, we, 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 we were just talking with Teddy. We were talking about the, the correlation of gold and the yen. Yes. And we were putting the, the, we were putting the sure. comparisons up. Yeah, was, let's go it, for it. it. It was a little bit tough folks because well, just looking at it I'll well of course what matters is how long of a time frame right so yeah. we're just playing with different but just going from here so we're going back to a six month chart we got the gold contract up there we're going to put the yen 
spot currency to compare how the two have traded. <coughs> so you got the yen. <coughs> you got the yen up here in the gold, I guess, color. <laughs> and you got gold yeah. in the white. Right. And the yen was starting at about 112, I think. And now it's trading at about 108.81. Versus you had gold down here. Now gold on That's the right, right axis. So gold down there started about 1250, um, and trading right now at 1481. You can see kind of the, right. the difference there. Or when the yen gets stronger, the market. Well, gold loves it. The Nikkei hates it. You now know? the yen getting stronger is that it, a decrease it, in the price? Decrease, right? I just yeah. bring people so, to right. So you know, we started yeah. 112 yen to one yes. US dollar. When you get down here, you can see when you, you're yep. at, uh, what, 106, 106. Five and a half. So you used to need to pay 112 yen yep. to buy a dollar. Now you only need to pay, right now, 108 yen. Yep. So you got, you know, a stronger yen because you got to pay less yen for the same dollar. So, yeah, as that yen has strengthened, you've seen gold kind of creep up. And what I'm worried about right now, we're talking with Teddy, I don't want it to break topside because it's getting weaker. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We got uh, Think of Swim coming up next. Then we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Hello, get him, folks.